I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're talking about BL Heli 32. It's the next generation of BL Heli, and it's coming soon, and it's changing a whole bunch of things. Well, it's still going to run your ESCs at the end of the day, but we're going to talk about what's going to be different about BL Heli 32, what it's going to bring to the table, and also at least one thing you're probably not going to like. Stay tuned. BL Heli 32 is the third generation of the BL Heli uh, software firmware for ESCs. Uh, in case you're not really 100% comfortable with that statement, you know, these ESCs we've got that spin our motors, well, they've just got a little microprocessor on them and it runs software, runs software. And it's also the ESCs are built to a certain hardware design. So the software and the hardware interact, just like you can't run Mac OS on a Windows machine. Well, well, that's not as true as it used to be, but the hardware and the software are intertwined pretty tightly. And so when you've got a BL Heli ESC, for example, you had to have an oscillator. Well, that took a big step forward with BL Heli S because BL Heli S uh, specified a really a really specific reference design for the ESCs. They they had to have things like uh, gate drivers and dedicated hardware PWM drivers. And if that's all gobbledygook to you, suffice it to say, it's hardware that makes your ESCs run better. And uh, things like that were some of the reasons why for a long time, KISS ESCs ran, many people said, better than BL Heli or Simon K ESCs. They had hardware that the other guys didn't, and it made them able to run better. So one of the goals in this, I'm not making this up, this was a stated goal of BL Heli S, was to allow BL Heli ESCs to sort of be more on par with, well, they didn't name KISS specifically, but I think KISS was who they were thinking of. And they added some of those features in. And it was nice because all BL Heli S ESCs are required to have this hardware as opposed to the sort of hodgepodge that you had back in the days of regular BL Heli, where you kind of didn't know, some of them had really good active braking, some of them had not so good, some of them had dedicated gate drivers and others didn't, and the, there was a really, a really wide variety of performance. I feel like BL Heli S closed that gap, and most BL Heli S ESCs perform pretty comparably to each other. Some of them may be different in terms of reliability or etc., but in terms of just raw performance, I think they're they're actually pretty close. So BL Heli 32 is the next generation of that, and like BL Heli S, it specifies certain hardware. And the big thing that BL Heli 32 does is it specifies that it's going to run on 32-bit uh, processors, microprocessors. Now, we could have a big debate over whether 32-bit, 32-bit doesn't necessarily mean they're better or faster, it just means they have a longer instruction length. Uh, it's been a while since I got my computer science degree, but I think that's roughly correct. Uh, but the 32-bit processors that are going to be used in BL Heli 32 ESCs, they run faster, much faster than, the, well, do they actually have a faster clock speed? You computer science guys out here are going to really pick this apart. The end result, though, is that they will deliver more processing performance, whether they are faster in terms of, of MIPS or megahertz or, ah, let it go, let it go. And, and so one thing we're going to get from this is, is uh, for example, D-Shot, right? D-Shot is good, right? And you got D-Shot 150, D-Shot 300, and D-Shot 600. And the short version is that those use shorter and shorter pulse lengths. And the shorter the pulse length, the faster the instructions can get from the, from the FC to the ESC and ultimately to the motor. It's like if you're ordering a sandwich and you said, I like a ham sandwich, versus saying, I'd like a ham sandwich. Which one of those is going to get you your sandwich faster, obviously. Um, so so D-Shot 600 has very short pulse widths. And in fact, D-Shot 600 can run it up to 32 kilohertz. But most ESCs we, ha we have today can't actually handle it. The pulses are short enough that if you stacked all the pulses up end to end as, as close as you could get them, you would get 32 kilohertz, but the ESC would just get overwhelmed. Uh, you just can't handle it today. Most, uh, the exception to that being KISS ESCs, which can run D-Shot 600 at 32 kilohertz. And guess what? They're a 32-bit ESC, not a coincidence. So BL Heli uh, 32 is expected to allow running D-Shot 600 at up to 32 kilohertz and even D-Shot 1200, which is something that very, very few people have ever experienced. 
Uh, it's, it's available in some test code, and basically it's twice as fast as T-Shot 600. Um, there's, there's a lot of debate as to whether any of that really matters, uh, and that's not something I'm going to dive into in this video. Uh, there are some people, like the race flight guys, who really feel that minimizing the end-to-end -end latency between the PID loop and the motor is a key to good performance, and gosh, race flight certainly does fly very well, uh, so maybe there's something to that. The inability of today's ESCs to run D-Shot at 32 kilohertz is one of the reasons why, if I'm understanding them correctly, the race flight guys say they prefer multi-shot. Multi-shot is a much simpler protocol. It has its flaws, but one of the things it can do is even on today's you know, ESCs, it can run at the full 32 kilohertz, and that means that not only are you getting more frequent updates, but you're also getting uh, updates with less latency. If you want to hear more about that, I've got uh, two videos on motor protocols that go deep into that topic, help you understand the different motor protocols and why D-Shot may be better or worse than the others, and I'll link to them in the upper right. So BL Heli 32 is going to let us use faster motor protocols with less latency, and um, it, maybe it's a dubious benefit, but it's sure not going to hurt, and, and so we'll all go and give that a try. But I don't actually think that's the number one thing that BL Heli 32 is going to bring to the table, uh, because I think that one of the big advantages of D-Shot is the ability to send uh, to send commands to the ESC. See, D-Shot being a digital protocol means that you can just send commands to the ESCs. Like, for example, you can send a command to the ESC that says, start beeping the motors. Okay, now stop. With, with analog protocols, there's no way to give a command. Everything that the flight controller sends to the ESC is interpreted as a motor signal. And there's no way to say, no, 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 this one isn't a motor signal. Do something else this time. That, they just can't do that. But with a digital protocol, you can do that. So another example of a command that you might issue is to, to command the ESC to go into bidirectional mode. So if you want to do, uh, you know, turtle mode, we've heard of, people call it turtle mode. It's when your copter's upside down and you blip the, the you go into, it, you reverse, basically reverse the motors, you blip the props and whoop, you flip it over and then you go back to flying. Well, today, if you want to do that, you need to leave your ESCs in bidirectional mode all the time. And that means that half your throttle makes the motor spin the regular way and half the throttle makes your motors spin the opposite way. And then you do some tricks to sort of throw away the bottom half of the throttle, so, uh, except when you're upside down, then you, you blip and you turn yourself over, turtle mode. Well, the problem with that is you've cut your throttle resolution in half all the time, just so the one time you land upside down, you can flip yourself over again. Well, with D-Shot, you could send a command to say, hey, ESCs, go into bidirectional mode. F spin the other way for a second. Whoop. Okay, now go back to normal, and you can have the full throttle resolution the whole time. I hope I'm peaking your interest here. P-I-Q-U-E, not P-E-A-K, peak, P-I-Q-U-E. Okay, you learned something today. <laughs> Some of you did. Another advantage of the faster processor is that it opens the door to all kinds of new features. What kind of new features? Well, uh, current limiting in the ESCs. You know how when you get a voltage spike or a current spike rather, and you hit a branch or something, the, the current spikes, and you fry your ESC. Or your prop is jammed and the motor's not spinning, but you haven't dropped the throttle and the motor just, it goes and then it lights itself on fire. Well, with current limiting built into the ESC, then you, the ESC could go, whoa, hold on, buddy, and just back off. And KISS ESCs do this today. They have, they have current limiting. They're the 24 amp KISS ESCs, I believe they limit current at 30 amps. And what that means is the ESC will back off the voltage if the current is getting too high. It has a current sensor built in and it'll detect that. Well, that's something that can be added with BL Heli 32 because we're gonna have the processor cycles free to get that done. The, the processors that are used in BL Heli S which is not fast enough to add those features in. Another feature that can be added is telemetry. Now, your telemetry, what, don't we already have telemetry? Well, we have telemetry between the flight controller and the receiver and the transmitter, but uh, like KISS, and kudos to KISS, who has who's pioneered so many of these features, credit where credit is due, absolutely. Uh, KISS ESCs right now have telemetry, and the ESCs will report the current that they're using and the RPM for the motor, and that's super exciting. It means that you don't need a current sensor to get current telemetry from your copter because let's face it, the vast majority of the current you're pulling is coming from the motors. So if you get the current from sensing from the, from the ESCs, you're getting 
basically a pretty accurate current reading and you don't need a separate current sensor anywhere else and that's super nice but also the ability to get rpm telemetry is so exciting from a tuning perspective to know what the rpms are doing in flight it's, i mean you know the thing where when you get a desync and the throttle signal for a motor goes to 100 percent but the motor is not really going to 100% because you're just seeing what the flight controller is commanding, not what the motor is actually doing. Well, if we had RPM telemetry from our ESCs, we could see what the motor was actually doing. And that really opens up some exciting things. So telemetry from the ESCs, that's a thing that BLT32 is going to do. Not when it's first released, but it is, it is coming. So BLT32 adds a whole lot of exciting new interesting things uh is it going to make your copter fly way way better than before well i gotta tell you bl heli s makes copters fly so freaking good it's hard to imagine that bl heli 32 is going to raise the bar that much how much higher could the bar get raised i don't know maybe a lot i i would lay money that most people are not going to see a night and day difference it's the features i think that are most exciting about bl heli 32 though now, I told you there was going to be something that you weren't going to like, and here it is. BL Heli 32 is going to be closed source. Aren't I against closed source? Shouldn't I be really mad about this? I'm actually, I'm a big proponent of open source, but I'm not inherently opposed to closed source. I've never argued against KISS being closed source. I've said it's unfortunate. I wish it were open source, but I understand people have to eat. And if people want to start a closed source project, that's their prerogative. And I have a lot of respect for Felix and the, and the other KISS developers uh, because they've like the development of DSHOT was done hand in hand with Betaflight, uh, realizing that that was a benefit to the whole community. And so KISS has really demonstrated that they want to do things right. The other, thing, the other reason that I really respect what KISS is doing is, like, why doesn't KISS support smart audio? And Betaflight does. Uh, this KISS doesn't fully support smart audio yet. I don't think so. Uh, if, if it does today, there was a long time when it didn't. And the reason I'm told or I've heard is that uh, Felix did not want to take any chance on violating the GPL. So he was forcing himself to write the code from scratch, and he wasn't able to just sort of ah, take a peek and, yeah, we'll just look the other way. And that was why that took so long to develop. So I really respect that he's just taking all of that seriously. Uh, if there's anything to object to, it's a person taking an open source project, closed source. Wait a minute, isn't that exactly what's happening here? And in fact, Bale Heli has been released under the GPL until now, uh, just like race flight, and now it's going closed source, just like race flight. Well, no, not just like race flight. Uh, I'm not going to stir that pot again, but suffice it to say that the developers of BL Heli are doing everything right in terms of taking a GPL project and transitioning it to closed source. And basically what they've done is they have completely rewritten the whole project in an entirely different programming language. So BL Heli was written in assembly, which is uh, a feat <laughs> unto itself. Those guys were crazy good programmers to have written the whole thing in assembly for that long. And now they've tossed all that whole code base out and they've completely rewritten the project in C. So that basically ensures, uh, well, I'm sure that some of you want to debate that, but in my mind that ensures to a reasonable degree that you haven't reused any of the code and therefore you might have an ideological objection to them taking it closed source, but by the letter of the law, it feels to me like they're like they're doing it right. Now, what about that ideological objection to them going closed source? Here's the story that they've told, and I'll put some links in the video description to posts on the RC Groups thread. By the way, there's a BL Heli 32 RC Groups thread, which you should definitely check out if this stuff interests you. But, but there are a couple posts they've made where people asked them, why are you taking it closed source? You know, we, we like it being open source. Uh, and one of the responses is, listen, guys, we wrote the whole freaking thing in assembly. Nobody was making contributions anyway. Nobody can understand the damn code base except us. Uh, that's, my, that's my little interpretation of it. They didn't say those exact words. But when they released BL Heli S, there was a lot of uh, hardware out there. It's open source. Anybody could develop hardware for it. Lots of Chinese manufacturers developed hardware for it. Uh, and these guys, the developers, ended up doing support. They ended up putting a lot of work in supporting this hardware, having to develop features, having to help the, the manufacturers of the ESCs, and they weren't getting paid for it. It made a whole lot of work for them to, to support this code on this hardware. The people making the hardware were making tons of money, 
these guys weren't making any money. And and this is the final uh, sort of straw for me that what they're what I feel like what they're doing is righteous. Uh, these guys, people have tr- tried to give them money for years. Like said, where's your PayPal? In fact, people have found out what their PayPal address was and PayPal'd them money only to have it returned. For years and years and years, everything you see from BL Heli has been done out of, I don't know what the motivation is, but it hasn't been monetary. These guys have donated years of their life to us. And so if now they say, hey, we'd like to get paid, if anybody has a right to do that, I feel like they do. And I hope that you agree. And I think if you if you look at the whole picture, you will agree. Well, I, I don't require that you agree, but that's that's the argument I want to make. So what they're going to do is it's closed source. And what that means is that any manufacturer who wants to release BL Heli 32 ESCs has to pay a licensing fee. Uh, and the way it's going to work is the manufacturer will register the serial number of the ESC at the time that they manufacture it. The user will get the ESC, and when you go to flash the ESC, if you go to flash it to upgrade the code or down or downgrade the code, basically anytime you flash the ESC, BL Heli is going to go on the internet and it's going to look up the serial number and see that you have a valid e- licensed ESC. The goal is to make this all transparent from your perspective, but one difference will be that you will need to be attached to the internet <laughs> to run BL Heli Suite so that it can look up the ESC and see if it's a valid ESC. That's the part. If you were okay with the GPL stuff and the open source stuff, that's the part that's probably going to annoy you the most. If you're out at the field and you want to flash an ESC, how often do you flash an ESC at the field? Well, I don't know. But if you're out at the field and you want to configure your ESC somehow, you're going to need to get on the internet in order to do it. Hmm. Uh, well, what do you, yeah, too bad. The other question you might be asking is how does this affect things like, for example, race flight? Raceflight doesn't use BL Heli Suite. It doesn't use pass through. It manages the ESCs directly. And I don't know the answer to that, but there's been some indications in the, the BL Heli 32 thread that they're working with the Raceflight devs to try and figure this out. And the other, the other question you might ask is what about the BL Heli Chrome app, the Chrome GUI app that's used right now? Again, I don't know the answer to that. Hopefully that they will work with the, those guys to the developers figure out how it can still work with BL Heli 32. I feel like, uh, you know, I use BL Heli Suite a lot, but sometimes I get a, a question from somebody out there who's having the hardest time getting it to work. Something isn't right. They don't know. And I, I say, just try the Chrome app for gosh sakes. And, and a lot of the time it just magically works and who knows why, but thank goodness they were able to get their problem solved. And likewise, sometimes people are using the Chrome app and it's timing out and nobody knows why. And I send them to BL Heli Suite and it works. So I feel like having those apps is definitely a benefit, and I hope that continues to be true uh, as BL Heli 32 comes out. The very first BL Heli 32 ESCs, they're called the Wraith, and they're coming out from my Airbot. They're the guys who designed the Omnibus series of boards and many other things as well. Uh, so uh, those are them. There are other, by the way, I should say, there are other 32-bit ESCs on the market right now. And they're not BL Heli 32 ESCs. They're just yeah, like KISS is not BL. It's got a 32-bit processor, but it's not a BL Heli 32 ESC. So not every 32-bit ESC you see on the market will be a BL Heli 32 ESC. And you want to keep that in mind if you intend to buy a BL Heli 32 ESC, that that's what you're actually buying. Especially because these guys now are demanding licensing fees. I think one thing we can expect to see is that some ESC vendors will say, screw you, we'll just write our own firmware. And uh, maybe it'll be good and maybe it won't. But if what you want is BLH32, you got to make sure that's actually what you're buying. So there you go. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was all educational. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying uh, the new Wraith ESCs on a build. I hope they perform great. And, uh, and as always, happy flying.